really from the 1980s when we got scalable computing for the first time. Um, technology has been a bit of a fetish, fetishistic device. We've got obsessed with it. I think the last three to four years we started to take it for granted, which is a much better place to be in because then it's a useful tool. So I think what you're starting to see is technology become pervasive, um, which means you can get both high-level design, highly structured things, and you can get self-organization. So if you look at the way social computing works, I can assemble very sophisticated systems from free tools within an open architecture. Yeah, even 10 years ago, that would have been a million-dollar-plus project. So I think you know, the key difference is, is not, not the way you pose the question. I think it's more the fact it's now pervasive. I think we're also starting to realize the limits of technology and starting to realize that it's there to augment human intelligence, not to replace it. And that's kind of like a post-BPR Six Sigma phase. But that's early days, so that's a less justifiable prediction. I think, as in all technologies, they'll co-evolve. So, you know, co-evolution is part, you know, from when we picked up the first branch and hit, hit an animal with it, right? We've been co-evolving with our tools. So I think the tools modify themselves to work better with human social systems, and humans learn better how to use the tools and how to take, you know. So it's a co-evolutionary process rather than an adaption process. And you also get a lot of exaptation in that. The thing that technology allows us to do is to make what, you know, Gould called punctuated equilibrium, sudden, rapid, unexpected changes because we see potential in a technology which it wasn't designed for. Yeah, Twitter's the classic case with hashtags, and nobody designed that in, but it just got used. So that, that's exaptation within a co-evolutionary environment rather than adaptation.